Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about hydraulic conductivity and transmissivity, two very important concepts in hydrogeology. First of all, let's start with hydraulic conductivity. Oh, I should say both hydraulic conductivity and transmissivity are basically measurements of how well a porous medium can transmit water. Okay, so different materials transmit water differently at faster and slower rates. And so hydraulic conductivity and transmissivity are measurements of that. So hydraulic conductivity is defined by the letter K. Uh, I've never seen it described any other way. It's always been K. So if you hear somebody talking about a K value, you know they're talking about the hydraulic conductivity of some type of, of material. All right. So let's start by looking at the units of hydraulic conductivity. So the, so the units are a flow rate, like gallons per minute or gallons per day, over an area, like one square foot. So let's just write that out to make it a little more clear. We'll say gallons per minute over square foot, one square foot. And so if a material had a conductivity of 10, that would mean that that material can transmit 10 gallons per minute through one square foot of that material. So there's a caveat here I need to address. Hydraulic conductivity, in this case, so this material we're concerned with, can move 10 gallons a minute through a square foot of its area under a unit hydraulic gradient. Well, if you've seen the videos on hydraulic gradient and uh, hydraulic head, this may make a little more sense to you, but if not, I'll do a, a quick example and uh, explanation here for you. A hydraulic gradient is the difference in water elevation between two points. So let me just do a quick sketch here. If you, let me change colors too. If you had a, um, if you had an aquifer, and let me draw it like this, and like say this was your aquifer and you had a hydraulic gradient would look like this. So this is the, the water in the aquifer. And you have a higher elevation here than, and than here. So let's say it's 10 feet here above this point zero. And we'll say it's 5 feet there. So that's a hydraulic gradient. And what do we know about hydraulic gradients? Water flows from high elevation to low elevation. So water is going to flow down this way. Okay? Okay, let's draw this out and this will all make sense if it doesn't already. So in our example here we have a confined aquifer and if you haven't seen the confined versus unconfined aquifer video I would highly recommend watching that because it'll there's a point in here that it might not make sense if you have not seen that. So I'd recommend go, going and watching that before you continue. If not I'll try to explain it the best I can but this is a confined aquifer meaning this this, um, let me change colors. I don't like these dark colors sometimes. This unit up here is a confining unit. And that means that it's not going to transmit water. And if it does transmit water, it's going to transmit water very slowly and, and not very well, especially in comparison to our aquifer down here. So you could say that the confining unit has a lower hydraulic conductivity than the aquifer. Therefore, it's going to act as sort of a barrier to any water infiltrating from the top down. Uh, it's going to act as a barrier to that. And so here, I've drawn two little wells here at the surface. So let's start by looking at the hydraulic gradient. And we can do that by looking at the water level in these two wells. So let's say we measure the potentiometric surface or the water in this well to be right there. And let me make a little line there so we can kind of see this better. That's the elevation we measure the potentiometric surface in this aquifer at that point, right there. And let's say these two wells are about a foot apart. Let's say we measure the water table or the potentiometric surface in this well right there. So let me draw that out too. Okay, 
And let's say the difference between these two water levels is one foot. So the water level or the potentiometric surface in this well here is one foot lower than in this well here. Okay, and how far away are these wells? They're one foot apart. All right, so that is our unit hydraulic gradient. And that would be a hydraulic gradient of one, right? Because the hydraulic gradient is change in elevation of the water table or the water level over a change in distance. So here's our change in distance of one foot and our change in elevation of the water level or our potentiometric surface is one foot. So we have a one foot hydraulic gradient moving this way. Meaning water is going to flow from the right here to the left. It's going to flow from the back of our diagram to the front. Okay, so continuing on. So that's our hydraulic gradient is one. So that's our unit hydraulic gradient in this ratio. So we have water flowing and we can represent that water flowing by a flow rate. What is that? That's not right. We can represent that by a flow rate like Q. Yeah, Q is gallons per minute. So gallons per, uh, we said 10. So 10 gallons per minute are flowing through this aquifer. And now the last thing we need to define is our cross-sectional area, which we'll put right, no, wrong one. We'll put it right here. And then we'll say that this area is one foot by one foot. So one foot tall by one foot wide. And then I'll kind of draw this back to define it a little better. I'm drawing a rectangle here, but we're not interested in the rectangle. We're only interested in this square area. We're only interested in this little square right here. And now let's imagine that we've cut this aquifer, we've cut this diagram in half, and that water is going to flow out of this square foot area out of our diagram and into the bottom of the screen. So what do we have? We have 10 gallons per minute flowing through a one foot square area under a hydraulic gradient of one. And that is what hydraulic conductivity is. It's a flow rate through an area under a hydraulic gradient of one. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to transmissivity. Um, and you'll see transmissivity is very similar to hydraulic conductivity. And I don't think it'll be too much of a stretch to understand that if you get this. So transmissivity is represented by the letter T. Um, T. And transmissivity equals the hydraulic conductivity, which we just defined up here, times the thickness of the aquifer, which is usually represented by B. So B will be this length here. That's B. So it's basically the same, same concept as hydraulic conductivity, but transmissivity just takes that hydraulic conductivity and multiplies it by the height of the aquifer. Okay, so we could draw a little square area here too. And so the only thing that changes is this dimension here. This is the only thing that changes. This still remains one, this width. The height changes, that's it. So if you want, we can go through the units there and maybe it'll help describe that too. So gallons per minute, and we'll go with 10, 10 gallons per minute per square foot area. But now we're going to multiply it by the, the height of our aquifer and we'll call that 10 times 10 feet. So our units of transmissivity that'll cancel out, will be, in this case, it'll be 100 gallons per minute per foot. So that is transmissivity. It's the flow rate of water through a one foot wide or a one whatever unit wide strip of that aquifer. And it takes into account the entire thickness of that aquifer. And I think I said earlier that hydraulic conductivity is more for describing uh, the properties of a specific uh, material. Transmissivity is better at describing how well water flows through an aquifer. 
because it's taken into account the thickness of that aquifer. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully this was not too convoluted and confusing for you. If it is, leave me a message in the comments. So I definitely recommend checking out the other videos in this playlist. Um, I'll put links to those in the comments and they'll be at little uh, button things or whatever at the end of this video. Oops. But yeah, that's, that's it. And um, like always, if you found this helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more of these videos. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.